atomic theory and you will learn how to write an electron configuration. So let's begin. First of all, every electron will have a certain location in an atom. Just like it has a it has some address there. And that address will be easily found if we know the four quantum numbers. So what are these four quantum numbers? There is the first one, N, principal quantum number. Then there is L, which is simply we call as second quantum number. Then we have ML, that stands for magnetic quantum number or third. And then there is MS, which is fourth or spin quantum number. Now how are you going to use this? The principal quantum number N indicates two important things about the electron. First of all, it tells you how far electron is from the nucleus. It also gives the energy level for the electron. And then how do we know how many electrons are present at a particular energy level? There is a simple formula. Number of electrons is equal to 2 times N squared where N stands for energy level. So, if it's energy level number 1, N equal to 1, this is going to be 2 times 1 square, which is 2. If it's second, N equal to 2, it will be 2 times 2 square, which will be 8. If it's third, it is 2 times 3 square, that's 18. And if it is fourth energy level, 2 times 4 square, which will be 32. Now, how are these electrons arranged in that principal level? We are going to find that out in a minute. So, we move on to second quantum number. This quantum number has sublevels, just like our apartment, our house will have rooms. And they are classified as S, P, D and F. And I remember that as sing, play, dance and of course have fun. So sing, play, dance and have fun. S, P, D, F. Each of the orbital has different shapes. So it also gives you some information about the shape of the region. So what shape S sublevel has? It is like a sphere, so spherical shape. P sublevel looks like an hourglass or you can think about like a dumbbell shaped. And both D and F they are real shape and we won't learn much about that at this level. The number of orbitals. How many sublevels are there in that S level? So S only has one orbital. P has three. D has five. And F has seven. If you look carefully, you can see it is increasing from one to seven and they all are simply odd numbers. Now how many electrons can be there totally in each of the sublevel. Remember, each of that small orbital can take only two electrons. So times two will give us number of electrons. So S will take maximum two electrons. P will take three times two, six electrons. D will take ten. And F will take maximum 14 electrons. Let's move on now. And before we move on, I want to make sure that we all get this correct. So, this is the energy level which is N. So, this is principal quantum number. This is the sub level which we write as S. This is the orbitals, how many orbitals we have. And then we are going to find out how we match our formula 2N square which we got the answer 2, 8, 18, 32 is exactly correct. So n equal to 1, we have s orbital, only one orbital. Electrons are 2. 
here n equal to 2, we get 1s orbital, 3p orbitals, electrons are 2 and 6 and look here, 2 plus 6 together we end up getting 8 electrons in the main principal level energy level equal to 2. As we keep on looking to energy level n equal to 3, we keep on adding extra sub level. So S is 1, P is 3, now we got D added, D is 5 and electrons are 2, 6 and 10 and when we add all those, we end up getting 18. This is 2, I'm sorry, this is 1, 3, 5 and 7 are number of orbitals and electrons are 2, 6, 10 and 14. When we add all those, we end up getting 32 electrons there. Now let's find out a little bit about the third, magnet, third quantum number or which we call as magnetic quantum number. This gives us the information about the orientation of those orbitals. How are they inclined? And then there is a spin quantum number which of course gives spin. Now why electrons have a spin? Electrons have negative charge and similar charges ripple. So because of repulsion, electrons will have always opposite spin. And we write that by an upward arrow and a second electron as the arrow pointing downwards. Or we also write as plus half and minus half as indicating uh, the spin is opposite for those two electrons. Okay, now what is electron configuration exactly? This is simply arrangement of electrons around the nucleus and whatever we learn about principal quantum number and the second sub level, we are going to make use of that and we are going to actually find out where the electrons go, how many electrons are there in the sub level, each sub level which we have there. Then there is something called orbital diagrams. And what are orbital diagrams? These are a little bit much more in depth. They go in detail. It actually makes use of quantum numbers and it specifies how the electron spin is and we will learn about that in our next video. Before we begin that, there are three important principles and these are extremely important and without remembering that, we cannot find out more about the electron configuration. So, the first one which we have is alpha ball principle. This principle tells that electrons are placed in the lowest energy level first. That means if we have energy level say first and second are occupied and the new electron comes it cannot simply go to the fifth orbital. It has to make sure the second level is completely filled and then only it can move on to the third and then fourth and then fifth or whichever is the energy level which we have. Then we have Pauli's exclusion principle. I think about this as an exclusive club for two people. So there are no more than two electrons present in an orbital. Then there is Hans rule. Hans rule tells you that whenever we are filling sublevel, you put one electron into each sublevel first, and then after that you start matching, start pairing those. So let's say maybe we have p orbitals. There are three. So if I show with these simple lines, those are three subshells orbitals for p. And we have suppose four electrons which are coming in. The number one first electron goes into the first orbital or I call it room. Then second one goes into next room. Third one goes into the third room. And we will start pairing only after all those rooms are half filled. So fourth electron will go into the first room. So guys I will see you in next video when we learn more about electron configuration.